Okay, this is for L infinity. Supposing you have got, let us try to see what what happens if uh, you look at this. Well, let us look at even equal one is okay. Up infinity we have already defined. So we want to look at all functions from uh, x to r. Such that if I look at the component, so this is the xth component, right? What was r n? Mod a1 plus mod b1 to the power p, and they are finite, right? Some of them, some of the pth powers of the components are finite. In r infinity, it was some of the pth powers of the components. All the components is finite. But if we don't know what is x, how do you sum it up? Right? I want to sum of mod x. I want to add up all these things. We only know we can add up all these things when they are numbers. X may not be. X is arbitrary set, right? So let us specialize. Let us specialize x to be equal to for the time being. Let us look at it a b. Just to understand, special case x is a close bounded interval. Okay. Now mod of f x is a real number. Now x belongs to right. X belongs to x, which is a b. Now we can add up all these things. So what should addition f of x when x belongs to a b should mean? When x was a finite thing, one to up to n, I could write f of x i summation one to n. When it is one to infinity, we could say those which are finite. So what should summation of this mean? When it is unbounded, right? A b the number of elements x belonging to A b is not countably infinite. It is much more, so it is natural to put integral a to b. Integral is a sum. Integral is a sum on A b. So Riemann sum. Think of that. So we should put this to be finite. So not all functions we can consider. We can only look at say functions whose integrals are finite, right? So essentially, what we are looking at is we are looking at all. Um, so let us look at R A B, right? So it is f x to R. What is the meaning of this is finite? So Riemann integral is finite. Okay, Riemann integral. So all R A B is the Riemann integrable functions. F is Riemann integrable on A B. If F is Riemann integrable on A B, mod F is also Riemann integrable. We know that. So this quantity is defined, and for every F belonging to R A B, I can define norm of F one to be equal to mod F X. Dx a to b. So keep in mind it is same as adding up all the components, absolute values of all the component. Notion of what is addition that depends on whether it is finite, whether it is infinite, then it becomes a series. If it is uncountable, then you have to interpret it as a integral. But basically, we are generalizing absolute value. Absolute value on R, absolute value on R2 summed up, absolute value on Rn summed up, absolute value for function summed up, copying everything, right? And one can show that this gives a metric. So what is a metric? So f and g belonging to R A B. You can define. Integral mod f minus g dx a to b, so that is a distance d1 f g. So this is what is called L1 metric 
on Riemann integrable functions. And proving it is a metric is because absolute value. So, d f g h does not matter, right? Absolute value of f of g is less than absolute value of f h plus h g. So, integral will be less than or equal to. So, that is not a difficult thing to prove. It is a metric. Same proof works. It is a metric. L infinity we have already seen it is a metric. L 1, L infinity what is left in between is L p. You can define. So, I will not go very much detail into it. So, in fact, for every p between 1 and infinity, uh, look at, you can look at uh, what are called R a b with L, uh, L p metric or one should not say L p, one should say p metric. Why to put L p? p metric. So, what is the p metric? For f and g, the distance p f and g is nothing but integral mod f minus g raised to power p dx a to b. And the proof is same as before. Holders inequality, you use Holders inequality for mod that a raised to power p generalization of uh, a p g p mean, right? a raised to power p, b raised to power q less than or equal to same idea works everything. So, we will not go into it, but this is just for exposition uh, I am telling you because you may come across these things later on in your other courses. Okay? So, is is it is called a p metric. Why we want to define metrics on such complicated uh, spaces, right? One may think of R1, R2, Rn, good enough. Why we should go to uh, functions on defined on something? Why, what's the need for such things? Okay. So the need arises. Probably that may be a good way of looking at. Uh, so let us note. Let us look at C A B. So what is C A B? That is all functions on A B to R. F continuous. Look at all continuous functions on the interval A B. Every continuous function is Riemann integrable. Right? We had proved that. So, C A B is a subset of R A B. In fact, is a proper subset of R A B. Right? Okay. There are two things one would like to uh, ask here, I will keep analogy with real line and rationals form a subset of it. I am going to motivate uh, this, what I am going to do with these things, keeping in mind Q in R. Okay. Now, rationals, we said in the very beginning, between any two real numbers there is a rational and that property we called as a denseness of rationals, right? which is equivalent to saying if you take any interval that must have inside a rational, right? that is rationals intersect with every say open interval, right? that was denseness or another way of looking that was if you look at this closure of Q in R, Q is a subset of R. If you look at the closure of Q, that is whole of R, right? That is same as saying that every open set intersects. That means closure of Q is every real number is in the closure, right? Keep in mind what we had done. Limit points, closed sets, right? So closure of Q is R. So, saying denseness Q is dense in R is same as saying between any two real numbers because see if you say between any two real numbers that means 
there is a notion of order right between any two but if you take r2 then what is the meaning of saying that between any two uh, any two points there is a rational doesn't make sense because there is no order on r2 there is no order on r3 right so how do you write denseness so there the denseness we uh, saw it is interpreted as saying every open ball must intersect that set then set is dense right so in r n if you look at say q n so what is q n that is q cross q cross q that is same as all vectors x1 x2 xn so that each xi is each xi is uh, q then this is a subset in rn and qn is dense in rn that means what given any vector if you look at a ball around it of any radius then it must have an element of this inside it okay so that is what denseness means so now this is on real line so on rn we saw the what is denseness so you can ask on any metric space given any metric space can you find dense subsets of it are there subsets which are dense can you define the notion of denseness on any metric space so you can define so let us uh, we'll come back to cab a bit later so x any metric space so we say y subset of x is dense in x if y closure is equal to x that is a notion of denseness okay so you see that notion of denseness it defined in terms of closure so closure can be defined in terms of sequences right every point of x is approachable by a sequence of elements of y or every open ball intersects y or the closure of y is equal to x all those are equivalent ways of saying so example we said that qn is dense in rn there one sort of trivial example of Uh, extending the fact that q is dense in r n okay so let us call it as one so let us uh, go back to that so the question is c a b so is c a b dense in r a b of course denseness is with respect to a notion of a metric right because metric space so so let us write in l1 metric to be precise answer is yes and the proof is a bit difficult to give right and maybe in some of your courses later on you will find a proof of that right so i will not uh, go much into it i just uh, uh, keeping that this leads to study of general forms of integration there is some general theories of integration which will be required sort of uh, to say analyze denseness so we'll not go into it but i'm just giving you a exposure which we may come across you may come across in the future courses 
Right. So let us look at another question. There are many things I want to. Okay. And here is another thing. So let us note on R N on R A B are all vector spaces. Or even LP and so on are all vector spaces uh, with norms. Either it is this norm or this is P norm, or we have basically looked at three types of norms, right? And all these spaces we have, right? L1. L p and L infinity. They were norms. So meaning what? They were like the absolute values, right? So norms meaning the norm meaning uh, say norm of uh, x is bigger than or equal to zero, where x could be any one of elements or any one of this, and equal to zero if and only if x is equal to 0 and uh, alpha x because it is a vector space so there is a scalar multiplication right and how does it behave with respect to scalar multiplication that is same as mod alpha times norm x and the third x uh, if you look at two elements you can add them because it is a vector space so triangle inequality holds right and we had mentioned that norm induces a metric norm gives a metric and what is that metric so dxy is norm of x minus y so it is a general process given a vector space for every vector there is a notion of absolute value you can think of and it has these three properties and every notion of such absolute value gives rise to a notion of distance. Study of such spaces are called normed linear spaces. Such spaces are called normed linear spaces it is a linear space it is a vector space uh, there is a notion of norm defined on it and norm behaves very nicely with respect to scalar multiplication and addition so these are the properties right so such a space is called a norm linear space and uh, study of norm linear spaces goes into a topic called functional analysis so there is a separate uh, subject normally called functional analysis so examples of norm we have so we have a lot of examples of norm linear spaces lp spaces right what are its properties what are its uses and so on there is a separate topic called norm linear spaces we will not go into that but what we will want to look at is the following okay all right so uh, we have real line the starting thing which motivated us real line was a complete metric space it was a metric space which was complete right that was the big advantage that we could do everything right so completeness in various forms one way of completeness was every monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above is convergent that is sequential completeness another form was the cauchy completeness a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy that was equivalent to it right so there these are various forms of completeness so complete metric space and gave us nice results right for example the nested interval property was a consequence of completeness we use completeness to prove nested interval property now given a metric space
x d it may or may not be it may or may not be complete right given a set x given a matrix for example let us look at example so what is the meaning of it may not be complete a matrix space may not be complete means what right so that means there exists cauchy sequences which are not convergent right in a matrix space we have the notion of sequence right sequence being convergent sequence being cauchy because you only need the notion of distance convergence means closeness x and converges to x so distance of x and comma x goes to zero cauchy distance between x n and x m becomes small as n and m go to infinity right absolute value to be replaced by the notion of distance that's all closeness so whenever you have the notion of closeness metric you can do all that you do on sequences on the real line r n and so on so there are matrix spaces when you generalize the notion of distance on a matrix space there are notions which are saying that the matrix space under that matrix may not be complete so a very simple example is let us look at q as a subset of r right so what what does that mean we are looking at q with absolute value as a matrix space look at the set of rationals look at the notion of distance given by absolute value of that number rational is a real number also so we are restricting the notion of absolute value function from real line to rationals okay and you can real line with the notion of absolute value so these are two different matrix spaces q is a subset of r so you can say this is a subspace you can say it is a subspace doesn't mean it only says that q is a subset of r and the metric of real numbers is restricted to metric on rational numbers right and we had example of sequences of rational numbers which are cauchy but which are not convergent we had given such examples right when we were looking at sequences so there are sequences of rational numbers which are cauchy which are coming closer and closer but they do not converge to a rational number of course they will converge to a real number by the completeness property so this is not complete this is not complete okay but what is happening rationals are a subset of real numbers as a matrix space they are not themselves not complete but they sit inside r as a dense set if you look at its closure that is a whole of real line right so one says so here is something which we should look at so one says r d so um, q dense in r is interpreted as that r with the usual metric absolute value is the completion of q with absolute value so what i was saying is there is a bigger matrix space 
example R D, there is a subspace metric Q inside it. Q is sitting as a dense set inside R. Q is not complete, but R is complete. So one says that real numbers is the completion of the rationals. Real number are obtained from rationals via completion. All limits are put inside it; they are completed, right? So one says that the metric space R with the usual metric is the completion of the metric space Q.